previously on the Frontier Farmer. Good news, our animal farm is doing really well. But one thing that is apparent on the animal farm is that we desperately need A. Luckily, field number three is ready to mow. There we go, nice and quick job. All right, there we go, we're making some grass swath. Then the idea is we'll come along with the new tedder. Seems to suit the farm all quite nicely. And this should, yep, yeah, there we go, turn our lovely grass swath into a hay swath. We have finished baling up all of the hay. There we go, a bit of money outlaid, but it's nice to have a different kind of vehicle on the homestead. And we've loaded 6,000 litres. I'm thinking of creating a track that's going to run from the homestead through to the animal dealer, a little winter project that we're going to do. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Frontier Farmer at the Dark Forest. We're in December now, and luckily we've caught some sunshine, but it doesn't look like it's going to last long, so we've got snow on the forecast later on. Now, between last time and this time, I got busy lacing our hay bales in the shed. Tim was helping me out, and we used our new truck, our pickup truck, and attached a trailer on the back as well to get all of these hauled over. And we started with the best intentions, stacking neatly. And then it just took so long, Tim and I got a bit frustrated. We just started slamming them into the shed. But on the other side, we've got some of the ingredients from our open garden that make up our pig food. So I think we've got our corn, and we've got our soybeans, which is the protein. The corn is the base food. And then we've got our root crop, which is uh, the sugar beet. So, yep. Yeah. There we go. And I think the other ingredient of pig food is the grain, which is wheat or barley, which is in the silo. So we've got everything nicely stacked away and hay stocks or probably I'd say next year, because there is a lot in there. I think there were probably over 100 bales for sure. So that is very good. But first job on the list today, the chickens need a bit more feed. So we're going to jump in the old wheelbarrow and go and fetch them some wheat or barley. We'll see what we've got more of at the trusty silo. And we've got wheat 1900 and barley 4300. So we'll go with some barley just so we are using both and keeping good stocks of both. Probably needs two trips to fill them up. Okay, this wheelbarrow is very handy for these little trips and top ups rather than having to get the tractor out and the trailer also saves a bit of fuel using the old manpower load number two and we're probably going to need to do another crop for chicken feed although we have wheat and barley i don't think the chickens are going through it too fast but you never know it's always good to have a lot in the reserve but one thing we desperately need to grow is oats because we don't have any more oats I think the horses have only got enough to keep them satisfied for a few months or so. So yeah, we're definitely going to have to drill oats in the new year. And once we've mown our grass fields, we'll have to get back to that. All right, 71 litres left, so we can just pop that back in the silo. Super duper. Right, that's our chickens all fed. Drop that off there. And I think the only thing that might be worthwhile is giving the horses a bit more hay 
they've got quite a bit of sorghum in there but yeah we'll keep them topped up with hay and that hopefully might mean that they use the sorghum less so let's go and fetch a bale or two it's like jenga in there if i move one bale the whole stack could fall now this is the fourth bale and oh, i don't think they've taken the full load but we'll leave that there there we go khan and shiva are full of capacity but they definitely don't have enough of their base food which is oats or sorghum i think we used sorghum initially but we are going to have to drill oats that is more of a yielding crop chickens are all fed with their grain so that is good news cows are on 100 percent productivity but they probably need their morning top up of tmr we we'll probably just leave this tractor and the mixing wagon here because we need to give them a dose every so often because it's full of hay and we just have to top up the capacity to keep them at 100% but they will be happy with just hay but we want to be making that milk as fast as possible 686 litres so that's good now pigs are looking pretty good but they could probably do with a bit more base food so we'll go and get some corn I think probably two boxes is going to do it and that's two and I think they are full so we can take that away we don't want it to top up anymore I can see they got bang on 50% base food they've potentially got a little bit too much grain maybe 30% and then they're under on the protein and they're probably a bit over on the root crops but that's okay and the sheep are nice and easy we can just lob them in some hay and that'll keep them nicely topped up in fact, I think they are topped up because they've got these bales here. So I think we'll just leave these bales so it does act as a bit of an extra buffer. We don't have to keep topping them up as regularly. Right, that's the animals all done and seen to. The sheep are making some good wool. And cows are making some good milk. Pigs are looking to reproduce fairly soon. And the horses are just being horses. Oh, and the chickens, I think, have made quite a few more eggs excuse me ladies yep oh yeah we nearly got a full pallet now 1320 pieces superb okay, so we're going to jump back in the international and we'll leave the tmr wagon there because we are going to manure spread build number three which we mowed and turned into hay last time here it is so that's gone back to just a primary level of fertilizer now and we want to get it to the secondary so come new year probably around march time we're going to have a nice yielding grass again now we do have plenty of hay so i am wondering do we really need to do that but uh, i think if we could make another batch of hay and we're definitely going to need a bigger baler next time because yeah tim said he was not going to be helping me with clear all those bales again we spent a lot of that evening clearing all those hay bales so yeah i think we're going to get a bigger baler next time and that's potentially going to make our lives a bit easier but we might have to get another shed just to store bigger bales in but that should mean that we have got a good amount of hay to see us for potentially a year or two We'll head over to the dovecote and get a bit of a top up of manure so we don't run out head on back to the field to get ready for manure spreading very lucky that it's a nice clear december morning so far it's allowing us to get on and do this work and after manure spreading i've got a bit of a project in mind i think we're going to be building a road through the forest and it's still early enough that the ground is not solid and frozen yet so i think this is probably our last opportunity to do it and we don't want to leave it till next year because then we're going to be busy looking after crops and so forth so yeah we're going to do a road building project and the fortress which is in the shed our harvester there i think we mentioned that we were going to be doing a little bit of a, uh, a revitalizing project to get it back in working order now I have spoken to the distribution centre, they haven't got any parts but they have got potentially a newer model of that portrait so we could look to we'll trade it in an upgrade or we could just try and do some tinkering ourselves to see if we can get the engine in better running order 
let me know your thoughts. But for now, let's head on in and spread some manure on our grass field. Now, oh yeah, we can clearly see where we are laying, so that is pretty good, pretty handy. So I'm going to get busy spreading all of this, and I'll see you when we're finished. And there we are, that's the manure all spread, and that's going to give us some good grass yields in the new year. And the other field, field number four, is also on secondary level fertilisation. So we're going to have two pretty yieldful grass fields, which is superb. So that means that we probably won't have to do grass for a little while, and we also have a silage pit that is full of silage. So. Apart from straw, we should be pretty good for TMR to keep our cows nice and fed for a long while yet. And the hope is that from some oats and maybe another grain crop, we should be able to get a good level of straw in the dovecote as well. And your spreader dropped off. Fantastic. Right, so it's on to winter project mode and we are going to go buy piece of equipment that's going to help us build a road it is a grader and it's something that we drag along and it basically is like a plow but uh, keeps the ground nice and flat now that might bring up some stones so we'll have to deal with that but the plan is that we might be able to use the stones to hopefully act as a bit of a gravel to make the road nice so I'm going to head off and get the grader from the distribution center and then we can come back and start building our road from the homestead over towards the animal dealer. Now this is what I mean by grader. It is the Lizard Robust 480. And as you can see, it's got these plow aspects which are going to carve into the ground. But different to a plow is it's not going to dig into the ground too deep. It's more to just level out and clear the top level of the ground and sort of compact it as we go I guess and make it all nice and smooth so it's not cheap it's uh, $32,000 but for the future of the homestead we might be building a few more rows as we grow and expand so it's probably worthwhile in that respect and it's 180 horsepower that it needs to pull so our international should be up to the task There it is, and whew, it is a big piece of kit. I hope we're going to be all right pulling it. Should be. So let us uh, latch on and get hitched up. It's just a uh, OPTO, just a device that we pull, and I think the tractor should be up to it. It's only, as I say, taking the top layer of the ground off and smoothing it. It's not digging deep like a traditional plough wood. So let's get this over to where we're going to start the road and I'll talk you through what the plans are. We made it back and I'm just going to detach for a second because one thing we will need as part of making this road is the winch. Now I'm going to try and avoid cutting down trees if I can by weaving through. We're going to clear the roof. Yeah I think, uh, oh no I think the Exhaust has gone through there. Oh dear, I'm going to have to fetch this by other means. 
Managed to get it out of there, and good thing about the International is the winch can go on the front, which is pretty handy. We can reverse back up and get our grader. So this is going to be our road making sheen. Hitched back up, so let's head over to where we're going to start our road. We can go left past Tim's, because we don't want to be building a road too close to him. We are going to have two points that we can enter this road from, and it's going to be navigating around the hill that is up here, through the trees. You can't quite see it yet, but uh, it is up here. And you might notice that I have well, cleared a bit of a track to guide us as to where this road is going to go. And I went around with the shovel and just sort of scraped away the ground. So I've got a bit of a clear indication as to where we want the road to go. So I'm going to go up to the top corner first of all, because this is going to be one access point for our road. And it's going to meander on through the trees. So let me just show you on the map what our plan is. So road making. Here is the homestead just below the lake. and. I'm here on the map and you can see there's a mound here which we are going to draw a circle around because I have plans to potentially put a watchtower on the top of that hill to keep the homestead nice and safe. We can have a nice circle around here where we can access the road. And the plan is that we are going to cut across this uh, area here, which is quite flat, over to the next mound where we're then going to line up with it and come on down here to join this road. And the main purpose is really to speed up the journey from the homestead to the animal dealer. Because at the moment we have to go all the way round, down past the distribution centre, down to the fuel garage, round past Tim's old sawmill and down here. Whereas we are going to cut across. Now, we don't have to go to the animal dealer too often, but at some point we're going to have to sell pigs. So I think it's good to put a road in and something it's also going to give us as a benefit is it's going to help us sort of have a structure to expanding the homestead so we can look to build fields and yards off of this road as we go. So it is a bit of a future proofing plan to expand the homestead. So yeah, we need to make some roads first. So I think I'm going to start off and we can lower our plow. And here we go, we are now creating our road. This is quite scary because uh, I don't want to make a mess of things. But here we go, we can drive through, create our road. And it's leaving quite a nice smooth end to it. There's a couple of stones, so we will have to come and clear some of those. As mentioned, we might use the stones to make some gravel uh, for the road. And we can lay that on it to make it a bit more of a suitable road for heavy vehicles and machinery, unlike what we've done in other parts. Now I'm going to loop off here so we can do the circle around the hill first of all. And that's going to make it all nice. And it's actually nice driving around some of the more characteristic parts of the frontier. The rocks and hills that do exist in the dark forest, but are all hidden by trees. So, yep, yeah, we are going to come round here. And at some point, I'm going to come across a tree which is in our way. As mentioned, I've tried to carve the road or plan the road through as little tree disruption as possible. But, yep, yeah, as you can see here, we're going to come across a tree. So we're going to have to pause, just lift up and unhitch so we don't damage. And the plan is I'm going to fell the tree and then just use the winch to pull it out of the way. So let's uh, get it to fall that way. And clear the stump. The limit. And just line up to give it a friendly shunt out of the road. So that's going to be the strategy for the trees for the time being. And I will, of course, come and winch them out at a later date. But for now, we're in road creating mode. So we don't want to be 
too distracted. So yeah, I'll have to try and remember where they are or do a little bit of a route around after we've created the road to come and winch them all up. But for now, I'm going to get our road all created and smoothened out. And then we'll be back with the stone picker. And I might get a stone picker for our wheel loader to make the job a bit easier. It's going to have more capacity. Yep, let's uh, carry on and create the rest of our road. So I'll see you when we've got a nice new shiny flat road. can raise up because we have made it to the other part of the road in fact I am just gonna carry on and cut that little corner just so we've got a nice entry to the road fantastic so we have carved our road through the dark forest to meet up with the road that goes to the animal dealer and it's been quite fun I've had to stop and start a few times to clear the trees out of the way but it's not been too much of a problem so I'm going to try and turn around. This uh, grader is quite difficult to manoeuvre because it has a dolly that steers it at the front. And then uh, yeah, it is quite long. So I guess the dolly means that it can be quite manoeuvrable. But you can snag yourself on the trees if you are not careful. And yeah, you don't want to be uh, shearing any bolts by doing tight turns like that. But there we go. So we have our road. Let's uh, drive on back through it and we can have a little look from the cab. It is a bit bumpy so we do need to do some smoothing out and that's going to happen when we come and clear some of these rocks. Now I was expecting a few more rocks but uh, they are 
few and far between, which I guess makes our lives a little bit easier, but questionable as to whether we'll have enough gravel to deal with the whole road. We shall see. But yeah, we're bumping our way along. Uh, it is relatively alright for a road, but we do need to come along and sort of run over it with the wheel loader and have the bucket in front to pick up all the stones. That should smoothen it out to make it all nice and pretty. So let's head on back, drop the grader off and we can get the wheel loader with its new stone bucket attachment and we can come and collect some stones. Made it back to our loop so I'm just going to lower it again and try and cut a slightly different turn for the route back home which is going to come across this away there we go that's just going to make it more of a T junction there we go and raise up again and yeah come on out by our field number four we've got to park the grader somewhere and I think here is probably the best spot for now because we're not going to be using this field again so we'll unhitch you can drop the winch off and get in the wheel loader and go and fetch the new attachment for it. Now we'll in the wheel loader. We don't need the front bucket, so we can drop that off. And we can head on over to the distribution centre. So for our wheel loader we can get this CSZ horizontal grid bucket stone picker. And that's got 4,000 litre capacity, so that's pretty good. Okay. Got it attached, that's pretty handy. Let's jet on back. Now, although we've got a stone picker for doing our road for the wheel loader, I don't want to use the wheel loader for stone picking all the time. The tractor with its own stone picker is pretty good for clearing the fields of stones where we plough or deep cultivate. Because a uh, wheel loader is a bit heavier, we don't want to be compacting our fields down too much. Because the wheel loader is heavy, it's going to be perfect for compacting down our road. I think we can start this side because we can meet up with the circle goes round and if we drop down enough don't want to be pitching the wheel loader up but just enough that we're going to be picking up stones we should be able to come along and pick these up okay we're a bit high so we need to drop it down a bit more okay that seems to be working not impacting the steering that's good now we can only do one half of the road as we go so we'll probably stick to one side and come back and do the other but yeah if we need to dart across to the other side of the road then we can do but we'll try and pick up as much stones as possible get all of this cleared and then we could probably look to lay some of our gravel and make a road out of it we go we've stone picked the whole road and that uh, took a little bit longer than expected but it only yielded 424 litres of stones which is a bit surprising but then again it isn't because when I was thinking about it I was expecting to get more stones but then the grader does not dig deep it only sort of scuffs the surface so really what we only turned over as stones was the larger surface stones whereas if we would have been ploughing of course we would have dug deeper and got some of the chunkier stones 
So that makes a lot of sense, but it uh, does mean we're going to have to change our plans slightly. I was hoping to have a bit more stones to utilise as gravel for the road, but instead we're probably just going to have to let it sort of compact and dry as dirt. So it'll be not a gravel track, but a dirt track, but that's not a huge problem. So we can drop off our stones here with the remainder. Fantastic. Drop the bucket off. And then I'm going to see about sourcing a roller. And hopefully that will compact and help the dirt dry up. Because it is looking a little bit sort of wet. It's been under the foliage of the forest. And then that's going to solidify and make it a nice track for us. Back in the International. And we'll go and fetch ourselves a roller so we can get the ground all nicely compacted. Now, of course, I didn't use this approach to road or track creation on this side of the forest when we first sort of moved here and set it up our homestead. This was just created by driving over it repeatedly. But for once, we are creating a road the professional way. So for rollers, we can't have the riveted or ridged type of roller. We need a flat roller to compact the ground. We don't want to be leaving ridges. So this Lizard Roller 2.5, which needs 35 horsepower to run, is going to be perfect. $1,700. Quite heavy, but no match for the International. So we made it back and we've got our roller. So I'm going to start to roll and then I'll show you how our road looks when it's all finished. And there we go. I've finished rolling. As you can see, the December sun has been at work as well whilst I've been compacting and turned it into a nice dirt track. So that is our lovely road through the forest all completed now. So we can go and park off the roller. Uh, I'll maybe just drive around this circle so we can uh, show you a little bit about what it looks like now. It's nicely flattened. So it's perfect for us to drive on. Well, as long as I don't drive on the edge and hit certain bumps and bobs. But there we go. It's a nice meandering road through the forest that can take us over to the animal dealer. And then, yeah, we can look to expand in and around this path. I don't think it'll be the only road we end up making. Probably make some more. I'm going to keep the homestead tracks as they are for now, but... Yeah, some stage in the future we might look to make them into more permanent roads. But yeah, our first winter project has been done, but it certainly hasn't felt like winter because it's been quite sunny today, but snow is on the horizon. So that might mean that we are kept at bay in January and February with some snow, which means that might be the better time to do our restoration project on the Fortrit Harvester. We'll have to see what parts we can source for that. Drop the roller off there. And of course over winter we'll have to keep all of our animals happy and fed. And hopefully they won't get too cold being out and about. And then one other thing I'd like to explore is potentially setting up a bakery for the homestead so we can start to make some bread. And that's going to do us well over winter to have some good stodgy bread and potatoes and all sorts of things like that. Another little TMR dash for the cows. And that is them all happy. Right, so it's quarter to one, but we are calling it a day there because we've been hard at work and we're only going to be losing more daylight now anyway. But today we tended to the animals, gave them some more hay and bits and bobs, and then we manure spread our field number three with grass in so that's going to yield really well come the spring and then we got on with creating our road and that goes all the way to the animal dealer and it's going to be a nice place for us to expand the homestead off from i hope you have enjoyed watching if you have remember to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't Arkmus is here sniffing some fun stuff if you've got any tips, tricks or things you'd like me to do, then feel free to leave a comment. But all there's left to say is I hope to see you again next time on the Frontier Farmer. 
And until then, I'll catch you later. Cheers all, and bye-bye.